This broke today. Um, I think the thing that's so interesting about this Russia stuff is that I would gen- I would generally tend to think with Sam that this is more a organized crime type of question than an espionage question. And then I think with Waj, that's the other point that I'm interested in. I think that there is a carbon-based petrochemical pursuit, far-right, neo-white nationalist, global foreign policy that does see linkages between Trump, Russia, and neo-fascists in Europe. And I think that that's an important thread on it. But a lot of what we know, and maybe there'll be more things that emerge, but what do we know? We know that Trump has weird you know, associates and this and that. We know about that Felix Sater guy. Uh, we know that Paul Manafort operates you know, the way he operates. We know that there's this weird deranged guy, Carter Page, who has a weird con- uh, persecution complex and maybe was too stupid to be involved in anything criminal, but maybe he was. And when we also know that Mike Flynn took money from Russia and from Turkey as a foreign uh, you know, he took Russia, at the very least we know, to go to that RT summit where he was hanging out with Vladimir Putin. And we know that he lobbied and was a foreign agent on behalf of the Turkish government right up through the transition, where he defended uh, Erdogan's recent crackdown. And he talked about, you know, compared Fatullah Gulen, who is a controversial but, you know, essentially a quiet, <laughs> quiet's not the right word, but he ain't Osama bin Laden. That's insane. Mike Flynn compared him to Osama bin Laden in the Hill column. And now here's Jason Chaffetz, uh, head of the House Oversight uh, Committee, who, of course, is going to be resigning soon. Uh, He's flanked by Elijah Cummings, who's the ranking Democrat on the committee. And uh, they're coming out and saying what seems to, to me, I mean, hopefully there's new information. I'm sure there's some new information here, but what we already knew about Mike Flynn and his relationship to foreign governments. And if that money was received by General Flynn, and we believe that it was, uh, that money needs to be recovered. That final determination, again, will have to come from the Department of of the Army, as well as the Department of Defense. But as a former military officer, you simply cannot take money from Russia, Turkey, or anybody else. Uh, And it appears as if he did take that money. It was inappropriate. uh, And there are repercussions for the violation of law. So the White House has declined to release documents related to Flynn and these questions today. Executive um, privilege. Executive privilege. And basically the, 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 the sort of question is, is did Flynn disclose things properly when he was being vetted? Um, <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, vetted should always be a punchline in this administration. But did he properly disclose the payments and the works he was doing on behalf of foreign governments during the transition process? Now, you know, in some ways, as I always say, of course, he, and he, and he, I, I don't know whether he did or didn't. I know that they probably totally didn't care. Then there's the question of did the conversations with the Russian ambassador, was he freelancing or was he directed? Way more relevant and way more on the record is the Turkey stuff. You had a guy in there who is was absolutely belligerent and had bloodlust for an insane war with Iran, who was connected with Michael Ledeen, who was one of the most crazy, demented foreign policy pseudo-experts with a decades-long obsession with Iran. Uh, and we are have been dependent on and thankfully backed Kurdish radicals fighting ISIS in Syria. That would disappear if we gave in to the foreign policy demands of the Erdogan government. So you had a guy coming in there who was lobbying for Turkey, who was willing to give up Fatullah Gulen out of Pennsylvania, fly him back to Turkey, where he would certainly face life imprisonment at the bare minimum, and uh, almost certainly sell out the Kurds, which might happen anyways. So these things do have real implications. And obviously, it wasn't properly vetted and disclosed. And, you know, here we go. But this isn't like, you know, as we said, this is something that's already out in the open. Paul Manafort's connections to, you know, criminal networks uh, in Ukraine are pretty clear. His, you know, work on behalf of pro-Russian oligarchs are pretty clear. Mike Flynn doing this lobbying is pretty clear. And again, this fits more into the continuum of what almost everybody in Washington does, which is consult for everybody and influence pedal for everybody. It's just if you got to work in this terrain, that probably means your brand is less marquee. And don't forget, when Mike Flynn left the Obama uh, 
team as director of national intelligence, he was, you know, he was fired for being bad at his job. This wasn't the, and that's always the right wing story. The right wing story is not like, hey, you were completely incompetent. You have absolutely no idea how to follow a linear train of thought, and you're susceptible to conspiracy theories. It becomes, you know, Obama was a sissy, and I couldn't fight Tara, so now I'll work my way up through hey, Trump. Hey, folks, the Majority Report YouTube page is in a bit of a crisis right now uh, because of changes in their algorithms. Our YouTube revenue has been clobbered. We need your help. Just a couple of bucks a month would really help us out and keep this channel going. Head over to our Patreon page to find out more information. It's the URL, URL is right here.